all right guys welcome back to with electric fields here now we're going to be doing problems in two dimensions so this gets quite a bit harder but we'll walk through it step by step so let's look at this equation uh question two charges equal to 2.9 microcoulombs are placed at two corners of a square 0.5 meters per side so each side is 0.5 meters and we have one we're going to call this one charge one and then we'll call this one charge two they're both equal to the same amount. So they're both equal to 2.9 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. 2.9 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. Um, and maybe I'll do this one in green and this one in red. Okay, so we'll do it like that. And first, the, and the question is, which charge will create a stronger electrical field at point three? So this is point three right here. And we want to know right here at this point, and this is important to know, we want to know what the electric field is at this point right here, but there's nothing over here, okay? So again, there's nothing over here. What's happening is these two charges are emitting an electric field. One, uh, this one's emitting an electric field and this one's emitting an electric field. And we want to know both of these charges combined, what is, the electric field that they're producing over here. Again, you can think about it as like magnets. If this is like, you know, po these positive magnets, then they have a certain kind of magnetic um, attraction or electrical attraction right here. So that's how you can think of it. So what is this kind of field, this electric field that they're creating right here? There's nothing over here, but what is the electric field created by these two? So which charge will create a stronger electric field at point three? Charge one, or charge two. So what you should know is that charge two is closer than charge one. So charge one and charge two, even though they have the same magnitude, charge one is further away. So that means charge two will have a closer, uh, since it's closer, it'll have a stronger electric field while this one is gonna be weaker. So this is gonna be charge two. Now it says find the magnitude and direction of the net electric field at the third corner of the square. So we want to know what the net electric uh, for an uh, electric field is going to be. And how we're going to do this is we're going to first try to find what the electric field is with one of them. And then we're going to try to find what the electric field is of the second one. So I'm first going to look at the electric field created by this charge here. So I'm looking for E1 what is E1 equal to, and then later on what E2 is it gonna be equal to. Since we're looking for what the electric field is created by this charge, I'm gonna be using this formula. E is equal to KQ1 over R squared, okay? Uh, maybe the first thing I should just figure out is what is R? So R. So R is gonna be just Pythagorean here, theorem here, 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared and the square root of that, and then we get 0.707. Okay, so 0 0.707 meters. Now let's try to find what this E1 is equal to. So E1 is equal to K, nine times 10 to the ninth. Q1, which is gonna be equal to 2.9 times 10 to the negative six over R squared. It's a distance of 0 0.707 squared away. Again, we're not using the other formula because we're not looking for the force at this point. There's no charge at this point. We're just trying to find what the electric field is at this point created by these two charges, okay? So a lot of students get confused by that. So make sure uh, that that's not you. And after we do a few more problems like this, you, it should get less confusing. You should understand more of what I'm saying when you have a little more practice. So we see that this one produced an electric field that is up to 52,215.8 Newton per Coulomb. So this one is gonna be producing an electric field at this point that is up to 52,215.8 Newton per Coulomb, okay? What you should know is if we were looking for the electric field like over here, it would be more than that because it's closer to the charge, okay? So the further out it goes, the weaker and weaker it gets. Now let's look at charge two. Let's try to find what E2 is equal to. And remember, we think this one is more than this because it's closer. So let's find out. 
E2 is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th times the same, ch same charge, 2.9 times 10 to the negative 6, and it's only a distance of 0.5 meters away. So let's put that into our calculator. 2.9 squared. And we get 104,000. So even though it's only a little bit away, it's a lot uh, stronger. So this one is 104,400 Newton per Coulomb. So this is great because we found the two uh, electric fields here, but we want to know what both of these combined are going to be like. Okay, so we want to know what both of these combined are going to be like. So how we're going to be doing this, I'm going to use the black one here, is we're going to find what the sum of electric uh, field is in the x direction and what the sum of electric field is in the y direction. So we're going to do E1x plus E2x is equal to, and now we're going to do, sorry, E1y plus E2y is equal to. And so E1x. So in order to find what E1 is in the x direction, what we have to figure out is we have to find out how much of this is in the x direction and then how much of it is in the y direction. Uh, I'm going to kind of draw it out over here. So E is like this. It's 52,215.8. And what we should know is since this is a square, there's going to be a 45 degree angle. So we want to know how much it is in the x direction and the y direction. So I'm just going to do 52,215.8 times cosine of 45. And that gives us 36,922.1. And since it's 45 degrees, I know this is going to be the same number. So I know that this is also 36,922.1. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say E1x is equal to 36,922.1. And now what is E2x? So what I should know is this is completely horizontal. This is complete in the x direction. So this is going to be equal to plus 104,400. Okay. Now let's look in the y direction. We know in the y direction E1 y is the same as e1x so 36,922.1 and the y direction this isn't moving in the, this isn't going in the y direction at all it's completely horizontal so this one is just zero so the total of these this one is simple 36,922.1 but for this one we have to add them up together plus 104,400 so this is going to be 141 322.1 so now uh, once we found the total in the x and total in the y now we have to put them together so what we're going to do is this one uh in the x direction is the total of 141 322.1 and the y direction what we have is 36,922.1 and then when we're putting them together that means the electric field uh, we're going to do the pythagorean theorem here and then we're going to do 36,922.1 squared plus 141, 322.1 squared. And then find the square root of both of those. And we get 146065.7 Newton per Coulomb. So that is our answer here. That's our magnitude. And lastly, we want to find what the direction is. So we're going to do tan inverse opposite 36,922.1 divided by adjacent 141 322.1 and then this will give us a certain direction okay and let's see tan inverse 36,922.1 divided by 141 322.1 and we get oh did something wrong tan inverse 36,922.1 divided by 141 322.1 and we get 14.64 degrees okay and that's our direction um yep yeah. so that's how you do it we're gonna do one more maybe that's a little bit harder but uh you should get more used to it so it should get easier as the time goes on all right let's look at example number 11. the figure shows a system consisting of three charges q1 which is positive five microcoulombs call this positive 5 microcoulombs. Q2, which is positive 5 microcoulombs. 
and Q3, which is negative 5 microcoulombs. The equilateral triangle has a distance D of 2.75 centimeters. Okay, 2.75 centimeters. So what we know is that's going to be 0 0.0275 meters. Okay. Now it says find the magnitude of the electric field at a point halfway between charges Q1 and Q3. So we want to know what this is right here. The electric field at that point right there so there's going to be three charges acting on this and we want to find what the electric field is right there coming from all three of these the total of all three of them and how we're going to do that is we're going to find what they are each of them are one by one so again this one is emitting outwards so if it's emitting outwards there's going to be electric field by this one i'm going to call this one e1 okay so e1 is equal to k q r squared right so another thing that we have to figure out for this is we have to figure out what this distance is and what we should know is this distance is going to be half of 0 0.0275 because it's in between these two so this is going to be 0 0.01375 meters okay so now i can plug this in nine times ten to the ninth Q, which is 5 times 10 to the negative 6 over 0 0.01375 squared. All right, so let me put that into my calculator. Times 5 times 10 to the power negative 6 divided by 0 0.01375 squared. And then we get this large number, 238. Zero one six five two eight point nine newton per coulomb. Okay. Now let's look at uh, number two. So we see that this one is also positive over here, so it's going to be emitting outwards. So it's going to be emitting outwards like this, and this is going to be what E two. So E two is we know is going to be equal to K Q over r squared again this one's a little bit tricky we have to figure out what this distance is right here okay and if we know this is 0 0.0275 and this is 0 0.01375 we should know that this is going to we're going to use pythagorean theorem uh, to find what one side is it should be less than this side right here which we're going to discover right now And what we get is 0 0.0238 meters. Okay, so now we put this into our calculator. 9 times 10 to the 9th, 5 times 10 to the negative 6. And since it's a, a little bit further, we should know that this is going to be a, a smaller number. Okay, so let's put this into our calculator. 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times 5 times 10 to the power of negative 6 divided 0.0238 squared and we get a bigger number we get 79443545421 newton per coulomb okay next we're going to look at this last one this one is a negative so that's important to know if this is negative it's going to be pointing toward it so it's going inward so it's going to be pointing towards it and now we know that E3 is going to equal KQ3R squared. And this is going to equal 9 times 10 to the 9th, 5 times 10 to the negative 6, all over 0 0.01375 squared. And this is going to give us the same number as this. I'm going to put in the calculator one more time, just in case. Because this one's a little hard, there's a lot of numbers, so I don't want to make a mistake with anything. 0 0.01375 squared and yep we got the same number 238 0.16 528.9 newton per coulomb 
And now that we found out what each of the electric fields are, now we want to know what they are in total. We should know that the net electric field is going to look something like this. It's going to be going in this angle. But let's find the sum of uh, the electric fields in the x direction and what the sum of electric field is in the y direction. So in the x direction, we have E1 that has this number here, 2, I'm not going to write that all out, I guess so. 0, 1, 6, 5, 2, 8.9. And then we have another one going to the right like that. Uh, same thing. 2, 3, 8, 0, 1, 6, 5, 2, 8, point 9. And then this in the y direction, uh, in the x direction, this is just 0 because it's only going down. It's not going left and right at all. Okay. So we pretty much just have that number times 2. And then we get the number of 4, 7, 6, 0, 3, 3, 0, 5, 7.9 okay and then over here we see that this one's going to be zero because it's not moving in the y direction at all or there's no electric field in the y direction it's also zero again and we just have this number and it's going down so we're going to put that oh this number so it's going we're going to put that as negative seven nine four four three five four two point one okay and that's going to be our new percolum now we're going to combine them both together and what we get is four, seven, six, zero, three, three, five, seven point nine. And then we're gonna go down some. Uh, seven, nine, four, four, three, five, four, two point one. And then the magnitude. So this is the magnitude that we're looking for. Let's put that in red. Squared plus seven, nine, four, four, three. 542.1 squared and then we get a big number 4826165654 uh, sorry 0.7 newton per coulomb uh, or we can say okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 4.8 times 10 to the 6 Newton per Coulomb. Okay, and that's how we do that problem. Thanks for watching. Conceptual question here. So let's see how this one goes. I know this uh, is taking a little while. Two charges, Q1 and Q2, have equal magnitudes of Q. So they both have the same amount of charge and are placed as shown in the figure at the right. The net electric field at point P is vertically upwards. So we know that the electric field of both, when both of these are combined, is going up right here. Now what we want to conclude. We can conclude that Q1 is positive and Q2 is negative. Or we can conclude that B, Q1 is negative and Q2 is positive. Or C, Q1 and Q2 have the same side. So I guess think about that for a second. Uh, you could pause it if you want. So let's tr try option A. Let's say if option A, if Q1 is positive and then Q2 is negative, if this was positive, that means over here it would have an electric force that would go like this. And then if this one was negative, again, it goes towards it, so then it would have an electric field that went like this. So the net electric field wouldn't look like it's going up like that. It would look like it's going down like this. So we know it's not A. Uh, let's try option two. So option two, it says Q1 is negative and then Q2 is positive. So let's try that. If Q1 was negative, that means it would be going this way uh, from that one because it's going towards it. And Q2, since it's positive, is going outwards, so then it would be going like that. And what we can see is, yes, the x's do cancel out, and the electric net force would just be going straight up. Okay, this one is a little bit confusing. So if you were confused at all, try to wa watch that again, okay? All right, hope you guys enjoyed. See ya.